I bet Winston and the boys are glad that Mr. Garvey had a math book on the floor of his car. Not very many people have math books in the, in the floor of their car, on the floor of their car. I don't even think I do. I do have some um, kids' novels in the back seat, though. That might help. Anyway, we're going to continue on page 56. The museum was doing brisk business now that school was out, and the parking lot was crowded. They parked and made their way inside. Mr. Garvey took the computer from Mal and showed it to the woman at the box office. Bored, she waved him in. She was used to this by now. A whole bunch of teens had already arrived, of course. The four of them walked through the turnstiles, continued another few paces, and stopped. Where are we going? asked Jake. Good question, said Mr. Garvey, looking around. Does this thing give any instructions on what to do when we ha what what to do when we get here? He turned on the computer. It didn't say anything, Winston said. Mr. Garvey pressed buttons on the computer, confirmed that Winston was correct, and made a frustrated grunting sound. They stood there looking for anything that might be helpful. There were lots of interactive exhibits and a model of the solar system hanging from the ceiling. Maybe we should split up and try to find what we're looking for, Winston suggested. Mr. Garvey shook his head. Maybe later if we're really stuck. I want to stay together for now. I don't want to lose any more time trying to locate lost kids. So they wandered around. The problem was the puzzle might be anywhere. A multimillionaire who had manufactured special handheld computers could do just about anything he wanted. Dimitri Simon might have had the museum alter one of its exhibits. Perhaps one of the interactive displays had been reprogrammed in some way. They peeked into all of them. Fly a rocket, and what is a moon rock made of, and gravity on other planets. Nothing jumped out at them as being particularly puzzle-like. They had been searching fruitlessly for a good 10 or 15 minutes when Jake said, Hey! Look there! They whirled around just in time to see the Brookfield brains walking briskly toward the exit. They were easily the most easily identifiable team with their blue baseball hats and shirts. They must have found the puzzle and solved it, and they were already moving on to the next location. Winston felt a thrum of frustration course through him. First the flat tire, and now they couldn't find the first puzzle. Yet other teams were barreling on ahead. Come on, Mr. Garvey said grimly. The four of them hustled over to where the other team had just been. The puzzle had to be around here somewhere, right? But this part of the museum looked the same as the rest. Again, they stood there, bewildered and helpless, bloodhounds unable to pick up a scent. Where did those guys come from, said Jake? They came from this direction, right? Winston pointed generally. Yeah, from somewhere over here. They walked a few paces, trying to retrace the path of that other team, but it was impossible. They could have come from anywhere. Winston turned in a slow circle, trying to figure it out. And then suddenly, he was almost knocked over. He looked up to see Brendan Root and his team brushing by them. Hey, Winston, fun, isn't it? Brendan said, looking back at him as he jogged away. Winston was too stunned to reply. Brendan's teacher looked as excited as a kid. Mr. Lester, that was his name. He jumped up as he walked, or sorry, he jumped as he walked and pointed urgently toward the exit, as if his team wasn't already heading there. Come on, guys, let's go, he said. He definitely had Mr. Garvey's competitive spirit. Brendan waved at Winston again and then sped up to join his team. They watched them round the corner. I told you he was going to be tough, said Jake. Do you know him or know them, said Mr. Garvey? Well, we met that one kid back at the factory. Mal looked around. So where did they come from? Did anyone see? No one did. This is starting to not be funny, he said. Maybe we could run and ask them where the puzzle is, said Jake. Mr. Garvey laughed. Oh, they're not going to help us. Why not? Would you lend a helping hand to your competition? Jake looked on the spot. I wouldn't tell them the answer, but I might tell them where the puzzle could be found. I mean, if they were really stuck. 
Mr. Garvey shook his head. He patted Jake on the shoulder like a game show host consoling a foolish contestant. That's very admirable, he said. You stick close to me, Jake, so I can stop you from doing things like that. Jake looked like he had something to say in response, but then a voice from behind said, Have you found it yet? They turned around yet again. This time it was one of the Greater Oaks girls standing there watching them. She tipped her head. You're part of the potato chip thing, right? Have you found the puzzle here? Winston shook his head. No, have you? She shrugged with an ironic little smile. If we had, I wouldn't be asking you about it. Do you want to look together? All three boys looked to Mr. Garvey. Winston guessed he would have strong feelings about joining up with other teams. The math teacher cleared his throat. To Winston's surprise, he said, Well, I guess the more eyes, the merrier, right? Where's the rest of your team, young lady? She waved generally. We split up. They're all around here somewhere. Where are you guys from? They began to walk and there were introductions all around. The girls were Bethany, the girl was Bethany Seymour. Winston was more than a little aware of how pretty she was. With her shining brown eyes and long straight hair, he found himself trying to walk next to her and not walk next to her at the same time and cursed himself for being so awkward. Mr. Garvey said as they continued to look around the planetarium, you're from Greater Oaks, right? That's pretty far away. Yeah, it was a long drive to get here, said Bethany. And then getting from the potato chip factory to here, Miss Norris made a wrong turn, and we wound up somewhere with railroad tracks and a garbage dump. It took forever. Miss Norris is your teacher? Yeah, my English teacher. There she is, right there. Indeed, the nervous woman with a, the thick sproying of curly red hair was marching to them. She wore a wide-eyed expression that may as well have been a sign reading, I'm frazzled. Bethany, she said, voice shaking with agitation. Where did you go? We said we were going to split up, remember? But I said to stay close by, didn't I? I am right here, Bethany said, rolling her eyes. Where are the others? I don't know. They're here somewhere. They sure didn't leave. Mr. Garvey jumped in. Uh, Miss Norris, is it? She looked at him, startled. I'm Greg Garvey, a math teacher at Walter Fredericks Junior High in Glenville, and these are my boys. Miss Norris recovered. Nice to meet you. I don't suppose you know where the puzzle is. No, I'm afraid not. But this young lady suggested we all look together, which sounds like a fine idea. So they moved again. Where have you looked already? Miss Norris said. Jake's up all over. Mel said, those machines around the corner there, all that interactive stuff. Oh, said Miss Norris. It didn't occur to me the puzzle might be there. Well, said Mr. Garvey, that's for the best since it wasn't there. Well, we already looked around this part, said Bethany, waving to the exhibits around them. They stood by a gigantic replica of a lunar exchange module. Where else is there to go in this place? Bethany, Miss Norris, a voice called out, and a girl came running toward them. She was wearing a floaty pale blue dress and sandals that flapped loudly. We found it. Giselle, where? Giselle came up short when she saw Winston and his team standing there. Oh, uh, she said. Miss Norris understood why she turned mute. It's okay, Giselle. We're all looking together, right? Mr. Go Garvey and the boys nodded as if to say, oh, yes, and absolutely. Okay, come on, Giselle shouted gleeful. She waved at them to follow her, and they all ran a short distance to a small black pa passageway. Winston could have walked by this a hundred times and not see it. The hallway seemed to be for staff members only. There was another girl in there looking anxious, like she was somewhere she wasn't supposed to be. This is it, said Miss Norris. This can't be right, Mr. Garvey declared. Giselle said, but look. And sure enough, their third girl, she was introduced as Elvie, 
was standing by a pair of signs, each attached to a metal post. They were ads for Simon Potato Squares. In each one, the smiling guy from the TV commercial beamed out at them. Words by his mouth said, Think Square! They all moved into the hallway. There was barely enough room for both teams. So where's the puzzle? said Winston. I don't know, said Elvie. I'm guessing in here. Elvie was the tiniest of the three girls. With long, dark blonde hair framing her narrow face, she reminded Winston of a fairy from a fantasy book. Elvie pointed to the wall, and Winston saw that it was really a door painted black. Like the hall itself, it didn't seem to be part of any exhibit. Elvie jiggled the handle. It's locked, she said. This is nuts, said Mel. I agree, said Mr. Garvey. Can this be right? What are we supposed to do? Pick the lock? It's a fine thing to teach kids. Jake knocked. No answer. I tried that already, said Elvie. Maybe the answer is hallway, said Giselle. She was fidgeting in the crowded space, her hands moving up and down her arms. Her brown eyes lit up as a new idea hit her. Or space! because this is a space museum and we're all standing in a small space, so... So there's no puzzle? Her teammate Bethany demanded. You just have to find the sign? That doesn't make sense. Bethany, it seemed... Oops. Bethany, it seemed, didn't tolerate suggestions she thought were foolish. Winston decided he liked her no-nonsense attitude. Well, the puzzle should be here somewhere, said Miss Norris. Maybe you have to feel the walls, Giselle said, doing just that. So the puzzle's in Braille, Jake said, but he started feeling the walls too. Mal knocked on that door again. It's got to have something to do with this door. That's the only thing here. And he put his ear to it like a spy. They were getting nowhere, and it was impossible to think in a crowded space packed in elbow to elbow. Winston slipped back out of the hallway while the others discussed what they should do next. Mr. Garvey came out after him, and they glanced at each other, frowning. I don't like this, Mr. Garvey said. Winston nodded. Would Simon send dozens of people into a tiny hallway where the only notable feature was a locked door? Winston had created a few puzzle hunts himself for his friends and his sister, and he understood that you couldn't leave the solvers hanging with no idea what they were supposed to do next. Simon was either very bad at creating puzzles, or something was wrong. They saw a staff member walk by. He was wearing a lime green t-shirt with a name badge that said volunteer. Winston rushed to catch him. Hey, can I ask you something? Sure. You know about this potato chip contest that's happening today? The guy put on a sly look. Oh, I can't answer any questions about that. Sorry, you'll have to solve the puzzle on its own. But how do we unlock the door to where the puzzle is? The volunteer was taken aback. The door's locked? To the theater? Mr. Garvey said, what theater? Winston didn't even realize Mr. Garvey was behind him. The volunteer looked confused. The planetarium, the only theater we've got. The doors are locked, or aren't they? Mr. Garvey smiled. I'm sure they're fine. We must have gotten ourselves all confused. Thank you very much for your help. As the volunteers strolled off, Mr. Garvey put a hand on Winston's shoulder and pulled him close. Go to the planetarium. It's up toward the front. We passed it when we came in. I'll be along with the others in a moment. He said that with such a conspiratorial tone like a prisoner sharing an escape plan, that for a moment Winston only stared at him, expecting further instructions. Like, start digging through the wall. Watch out for the guards. But instead, Mr. Garvey said, go, and gave him a little push to get started. So Winston walked back toward the entrance. He glanced behind to see Mr. Garvey heading back to the little black hallway, and Winston heard him say, Jake, Mal, can I speak to you for a moment? Winston couldn't remember seeing a movie theater in here, but as soon as he saw the doors, he realized what the volunteer was talking about. It wasn't a traditional theater, of course, but rather a planetarium where they projected an animated solar system onto the domed ceiling. 
You sat in big cushy chairs and felt like an astronaut looking out a spaceship window. A tour of the universe, it was called. He glanced back the way he had come and saw Mr. Garvey ushering Jake and Mal, a hand on each of their backs, pushing them along. Where are we going? He heard Mal say. Just walk, Mr. Garvey replied. Where are the girls? Winston asked when they caught up. Well, Mr. Garvey said, I imagine they're still in that hallway. Now let's go. The puzzle's in here. Jake was open-mouthed. Aren't we going to tell the other team? Winston said. We're all looking together, remember? Mr. Garvey nodded and gestured into the theater once again. We were, and now we are not. Go in. Let's go. Reluctantly, Winston and his friends filed into the pitch black planetarium, Mr. Garvey practically stepping on their heels as they did so. They reached the center, and all eyes instinctively looked up. Projected on the theater's curved ceiling was a night sky more spectacular than any Winston had seen in real life. There were so many stars, they threatened to paint the ceiling white. There was also a series of words floating out there in the artificial universe. And if you noticed, the next um, puzzle in your book is what they see up on top. It's not time to solve it, so I'm going to keep reading. Mr. Garvey laughed when he saw the words. All right, he said, finally, a stroke of luck. The boys were heading down an aisle to sit in the big comfy chairs, but Mr. Garvey whispered, no, come back here. We won't be along. Winston was glancing over at the door to the theater. He was waiting for it to open and for the girls to walk in. They had ditched them, plain and simple. After promising they would team up, in the back of his mind, he had sort of hoped they might join forces with the girls throughout the event. Winston didn't meet many girls who liked puzzles, and that seemed like a pretty good thing to find. He doubted Bethany or her friends would be too keen to work with them anymore. Winston's eyes had adjusted to the dark, and he could see silhouettes of other teens sitting in the chairs, but he couldn't tell who they were. Mr. Garvey led them to an area behind the back row. He didn't want to sit. If all the puzzles are this easy, whispered Mr. Garvey, we're never going to catch up. I hope there's a real killer later on that, could, that only we could crack. You know the answer, Jake said. Of course I do. Look, just put, put the missing letters back, into, back in to get one of the zodiac signs. It couldn't be simpler. Now turn that thing on so we could submit an answer. Jake had the computer and complied. Do, 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 do. When Jake was ready, Mr. Garvey said, Okay, it's ready. Water carrier, bull, ram, fish, scales, goat. So type in A-L-R-S-E-T. That's not a word, Mel said. Just type it in. Jake did. After a moment's pause, he said, Mm -mm, not the right answer. All right, all right, Gar Mr. Garvey said, waving his hands as if erasing the wrong answer out of the air. Scramble the letters. It's an anagram. How can you turn those letters into a word? When nobody said anything, Mr. Garvey said, Winston, this is your thing, right? Mix up those letters. Winston thought. Alters, A-L-T-E-R-S. Good, try that. Mr. Garvey said to Jake. Nope, Jake said. Mm. Staler, S-T-A-L-E-R. Nope, sorry. Try alerts, said Mr. Garvey. It has to be one of these. Jake shook his head. It's not the one. Are you typing it in the right spot? Even in the dark, Winston saw Jake's eyes flash. Of course I am. All he had to do was push the first button, the only button the computer would let him push. Did Mr. Garvey think he couldn't manage that? Apparently so. Let me see, Mr. Garvey sned, said as he snatched the computer away. He glanced at the screen then handed it back who, to Jake, who rolled his eyes at Winston in disbelief. Hmm, so there's another trick to this, Mal said, looking back up at the floating words. A trick, said Mr. Garvey. Yes, a trick. 
They were standing fairly close to the exit, and as they watched, another team left the theater. Before the door could close, a hand opened it, up, opened it back up. Miss Norris peeked in and looked around. With the light flooding in from the lobby, she could see Winston and his, and his team easily enough. She turned her head and said something, and the girls walked in, glaring. If the four of them could could have blast rays, out, oops, blast rays of ice out of their eyes, Winston and his team would have been frozen forever. Bethany looked like she was on the verge of developing that power spontaneously. Winston and his friends traded embarrassing glances, and they all wanted to crawl under the carpet. The girls and their teacher looked up at the floating words for a moment or two, then filed down into the seating area, out of sight. Mr. Garvey watched his boys, who were watching the girls. All right, guys, this is a competition. Remember that. We're in last place, and we're not going to get very far if we help other teams. Let's get back to this puzzle. Now, Winston may have been embarrassed by his teacher's actions, but he wasn't about to walk away from a day of puzzles. Neither were his friends. Jake looked up at the floating words. They were shimmering and golden. I understand ram and, or bull and ram and fish, said Jake. But what is a water carrier? What's that supposed to be? Well, they're all constellations, Winston said. Symbols of the zodiac. Water carrier is Aquarius. That's what I am, said Mel. Right. The bull is Taurus. The ram is Aries. The fish is called Pisces. Scales are Libra. And the goat, that's Capricorn. They're all constellations. Winston gazed up at the floating words. The missing letters didn't spell anything, at least not anything important. Those letters had to be missing for a reason, though. All at once he saw it. It was almost as if some unseen force had whispered the answer into his ear. I need a piece of paper and a pencil, he said urgently, and I need to see. Mr. Garvey said, you have it? I might. I need, oh, sorry, it's too dark in here. He marched toward the exit without making sure the others were behind him. When they got back out to the main exhibit hall, Winston grabbed a pencil and a scrap of paper and wrote down those constellations. Aquarius, Taurus, Aries, Pisces, Libra, Capricorn. Okay, said Mel, those are signs of the zodiac. Winston nodded. And that's the key to the whole thing. So in your book, you can write down these signs of the zodiac. Good luck.